Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you are off to a nice start to your 2019 and you are back in the saddle. We are about a week in, so some of you may be starting to feel like this is a lot of work, but keep up the momentum, keep up the pace, and I will try to do as much as I can to keep you inspired and motivated. Talking about keeping you inspired, Today's video was actually inspired by many of you. This has been a highly requested video pretty much since I began YouTube. I have had many people ask me dating advice and tips and also what to look for in the opposite sex when you are in the market to meet someone. So today I am going to be sharing with you five classy lady tips to a first date. Now, I would love to do one of these videos for the gentlemen as well. Now, the problem that comes to play is it is pretty much women that watch my video, not too many men. Therefore, I don't know if this would reach the gentlemen. Now, a lot of these tips would apply to both the fellas as well as the ladies. But I do think there are certain things that speak just to the ladies or the women or girls, and there are certain things that speak to the guy. So let me know if you think it would be a good idea for me to do one for the fellas. I believe there would probably be more than five tips, but there are some things that would be distinctively different that I would say to a man versus a lady. Let me also say that one of the reasons I have held off on doing this video is it's kind of difficult to do. Number one, I haven't been on a first date in 28 years, and a first date could mean many things. For some people, a first date could be with someone that you already know. This could be an acquaintance. You may already hang out in the same social circle, and you just decide that you would like to explore the avenue of going out on a date with just one particular person from that social group. There are characteristics that are going to be different in that situation. There's also going to be things that are going to be different if you are 16 and you are going out on a first date or you're 22 and you've been out on several first dates. Maybe a lot of the tips today would help you because maybe you will see some errors that you have made along the way. This is also going to be for you ladies that are, do I dare say, midlife. Maybe you are divorced. Maybe you are recently widowed and you are just starting to get your toes wet on getting yourself back out there where you could potentially meet someone. What you need to do is just take these five classy lady tips for a first date and apply them to your situation. If something doesn't sound like you, that is okay. I am not a dating expert, clearly. I've been married for almost 27 years. But I do think there are some things that I think are no-brainers that if you want to be viewed as classy, sophisticated, confident, well-spoken, and successful, implementing these tips can be a real game changer. I have also witnessed many young girls especially do things that are so out of line and so out of character. And sometimes these are beautiful young girls. They are highly educated, but they just don't have the skills that I think are going to land the type of man that could potentially be husband and father material. So always remember when you are listening to these tips, a lot of it is what image do you want to portray? What type of gentleman would you like to meet? If you are looking for someone who is rough around the edges and maybe that speaks to your style and you wanna be rough around the edges, you go right ahead. Who am I to say what is right or wrong? But if you want to be a classy lady, I have five tips to share with you today. Let's start with number one, and that is appearance. The reason I want to talk about appearance first is just like I mentioned in my tips for making a positive first impression, whether you want to believe it or not, you are being judged first and foremost on your appearance. The minute you walk into a room, a judgment is being made within four seconds. Therefore, on a first date, you have four seconds to make that impact. What message do you want to make? 
When deciding on what to wear on a first date or the look you are going after, I think it is very important to know where you are going. If you don't know, don't hesitate to ask the gentleman where he will be taking you. Often it could be a restaurant. If you are not familiar with the establishment, I suggest that you get on the web, you pull up the restaurant, you review their website, you review their menu, and you take a look at the pictures. This will tell a lot about how dressy or how casual the establishment is. Another thing that I like to do when I am in that situation, even just going out with friends or my husband and I'm going to a new place, I like to get on Instagram and do a little stalking people that have been to the restaurant. I will go in and put hashtag the restaurant name and I will see pictures of people that have been there. People are sharing their photos on Instagram and tagging it. The thing that I like about this is these are true authentic pictures and that will give me an idea of how people dress when they are going to this establishment. Now let's say the gentleman wants to surprise you. He tells you, I'm not going to tell you it's a surprise. That is when you are just going to want to ask, well, could you please help me out? Is this a more dressy place? Is it more casual? No gentleman is going to take it negative that you are going to ask for these things. I would think most men would expect it. Once you have nailed down how to dress, now you need to put the whole entire look together. Let's talk about your outfit. If you don't want to send the wrong message, I suggest you err on the conservative side. That doesn't mean that you can't be stylish, sophisticated, classy, but I would be careful with how much skin you are showing. A first date should not show a lot of cleavage and it should not show a lot of leg. This is not the appropriate time to show a lot of skin unless that is the message that you want to put out there. A classy lady would not want to put that message out there. Showing too much skin will leave an impression of sexy and not that there is anything wrong with being sexy, but you have plenty of time to be sexy later on if this relationship happens to be cultivated. Let's talk about hair. I would suggest that you wear hair down because I believe most men do like hair down versus up and I think it's the perfect look for a first date. Be careful with your makeup as well. Men generally do not like a lot of makeup. This is not when I would probably do a real smoky eye. I would scale it back a little bit. I wouldn't do a bold red lip. I would just keep things very simple. Less is more. Same with jewelry and accessories. I wouldn't go over the top with anything. Again, simple, understated is going to let you shine and that's exactly what you want. You want him to see your outer beauty, not everything going on. You don't want to put things in his face. You want him to see you. You also want him to engage in conversation with you so that he can see your inner beauty. I do suggest that your nails are well maintained and I also would encourage you to wear a little polish. I wouldn't go extreme with black and I wouldn't do a French manicure because I think French could look like you're trying too hard and black is just too extreme. You could do a nude nail, you could do a red nail, you could do a deep burgundy. I do think polish on the nails looks nice and most men do like well manicured nails. Number two, let's talk about body language. Body language can tell a lot about a person. It is a huge component to communication. Whether you are picked up by your date in person or you are meeting your date, you want to make sure you are approaching him nice and long and lean, good posture, shoulders back, walking at a decent pace. You don't want to walk too fast because that will look nervous, but you also don't want to be walking too slow. You want to make eye contact as soon as you see him because this will tell a lot about you. When approaching the table, if your date stands to greet you, feel free to very confidently introduce yourself. You can do a handshake. You could even give a slight hug, especially if you and he have been communicating a little bit leading up to your date. Often if couples meet through a website, they will text a little bit for a couple days before they will actually meet for the first time. Therefore, they've gotten to know each other a little bit and if you feel comfortable to give him a slight hug, that is okay. Do not feel you need to. 
A simple handshake is nice. The important thing is that your body language speaks that I have confidence and that I am happy to meet you. Once seated, be sure to have impeccable posture. As long as there is no food on the table, you can place your forearms on the table and slightly lean in. I talk about this in my dining etiquette and table manners video. That will give him the impression that you are listening with intent, which you should be, and that you are fully engaged in the conversation. The other thing that you do not want to do is have your phone out. Men do not like when women have their phone out. Just like I talk about in the dining etiquette video, your phone should be in your handbag completely out of sight. You don't want to give the impression that he is not important to you. Let's move on to communication, and this is going to be more of your verbal communication. You've already communicated through your body language. What I want to say about language, and I see this so often with young girls, and I think it is such a shame, and I think it is such a disservice to women in general, and I also think it is a big turnoff for men. I do not think they're impressed, but for some reason, I think a lot of young girls think it's impressive. And I have to say, it is not. It really is not. And I hope if you are that person watching, although this may be hard to hear, I hope this really sticks. But do not be loud, rough, or aggressive with not only your voice as far as how loud you are, but with your language as well. You should not be talking with slang. You should not be using manly words. You certainly should not be swearing. It does not impress men. It actually makes them uncomfortable. Often they may kind of laugh and go along with it, but deep inside they are very uncomfortable. It is not classy. Men like women and girls to be women and girls. If they wanted to go out with the guys, they would have called the guys. So clean up your act. Also, if you want to be known as a confident lady, then you would never draw that type of attention to yourself. Drawing attention to ourself is generally a sign of low self-esteem. You are actually sending the wrong message when you may think you're making an impact, but it is only a negative impact that you are making. Let's talk about how to be a good conversationalist. Well, this is when I think you should do your homework and perhaps even do a little stalking. If you really want to be able to strike up some good small talk, making sure there's no awkward silence, I would do a little checking out his Facebook or his Instagram feed. This will give you a good idea of what his interests are. It will give you a good idea of his family. Perhaps it could give you more of an idea what he does as far as a profession. And I don't think there's anything really wrong with it to even somewhat own up. There's no question he is doing the same. That is what we do. That's exactly what social media is. We are already putting ourselves out there. It's okay to have a little fun, a little laugh, and say, I did a little poking around your Facebook and I see that you are a big baseball fan. He is not going to be the least bit offended by hearing that. Rather, he will probably be impressed. And now you have just opened up a line for communication. He will come back and say, you are right. I am a baseball fan. My favorite team is this. I go to this game every year. My dad and I this. And now you have got a story going. What happens is once one story starts, it'll lead into another story. And what you will find out is, all it takes is that very first initial conversation to be started and it all flows from there. You really don't even need to be armed with a lot of things because again, it will just flow from one thing to the next. What you do want to steer clear of is anything that would be opinionated and you also don't want to talk about past relationships. This is a biggie. I don't care how much of a dirtbag he was or the guy that you just got done dating or the guy you dated a year or two ago, this is not the time to bring it up. Nobody wants to hear about that. It should not be out on the table at all. Dining and drinking. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on dining because I have the table manners and dining etiquette video and I cover everything there. But I do want to hone in on a couple of things from that video. First thing I want to mention is study the menu before you go. And I talk in the dining etiquette video about 
how when we go out with other people, we're talking, we're catching up, we're getting to know one another, and the server keeps coming back and forth to take your order. I think it's good to go armed with a good idea of what you want. Again, get on the web, look at the menu, and have a good idea of what you are planning on ordering. And order what you like. Be who you are. Don't be somebody you're not. If you want a man to be interested in you, you have to be you and not try to be somebody else. Don't order fish if you really like steak because down the road that could show. Let's talk a little bit about appetizers. There's a reason I love appetizers on a first date and I would recommend that you look over the small plates or appetizers section of the menu prior to going. Let's say your date says, would you like to get an appetizer or two? Don't turn him down on that, even if you don't plan on eating hearty. The beautiful thing about the appetizer is it extends your meal duration to be longer, which gives you more of an opportunity to communicate and get to know each other better. You agree to get appetizers and now he asks what you like. Don't hesitate to confidently give some options of what you like. Again, this paints a picture and it's good for him to know this. Also, when the appetizers come, eat. Go ahead and have some. There's nothing worse than somebody ordering and now you want to be super ladylike and you don't even want to eat. You want to participate. It's okay. Eat, engage in conversation, have a sip of your drink. That is all very relaxing and it will make him feel more relaxed. If you're not touching the food, then he's not going to feel relaxed either. This also applies when the meal comes. Make sure you are eating the meal. He is going to feel very proud of the place that he chose if he sees you enjoying your meal. I will say that there's nothing wrong with leaving some food on your plate and I probably would recommend doing that on a first date. Now down the road when you're married and you're out with your kids and you're with your friends, who cares how much you eat and how much you don't? But on a first date, I would say to leave some food on your plate. Generally, men eat more than women. I also advise you to pay attention to how slow or how fast he is eating. You want to stay in about the same pace. Also, very small bites. If you take a small bite, you won't get stuck with food in your mouth when he asks a question and then you're... If you take a small bite, it's okay to still motion, but you are going to be able to chew that up and swallow it much quicker. So small bites, pace yourself, eat your food, and leave a little bit on the plate. Self-awareness is crucial when you are going out on a first date. Just be aware, just be aware. If you have more questions on eating, again, you will want to go to my dining etiquette video because your answer probably lies there. One of the things that I missed in that video that many people left in the commenting section is where do you place your handbag? Well, you never want to place your handbag on the floor. You can place it in your seat right behind your back if there is not a hole there where it's going to fall through. If you are in a bench or there's a chair next to you, you can place your handbag there. If you have a very small evening bag, you can place it on your lap below your napkin. And my last resort would be on the table if it is a very small evening bag off to the side, but that would be my last resort. And again, this is just my opinion. Who am I, right? It's just my opinion, but I do think it's a classy one. Drinking. I have so much to say about drinking <laughs> because I do think this is a make or break and it's a huge one. Whatever you do, do not drink too fast and do not drink too much. And again, this can tell you a lot about him by how quickly he is drinking. Tune in, be attentive, and watch because if he's drinking really fast, like pounding the drinks, that could be something that might not work for you later on. So be aware, be aware, but also self-awareness. Be aware of what you are doing. Don't over drink. The other suggestion that I have if you want to be classy is don't order manly drinks. Now, I know some of you are not going to like this because you are a draft beer or a bottleneck type of person. I wouldn't order that personally on a first date because to me, although many women like their beer and there's nothing wrong with it, I don't think it's feminine. And I get to have that opinion, just like you can have an opinion. 
I just think that a classy lady is going to order something a little bit more feminine. Maybe a cocktail of some sort, a glass of wine. If you do order a draft beer, do not order the Big Daddy mug. Just never, just never order the Big Daddy mug, ever. A pint is ladylike. The big mug, no, it doesn't impress anybody. I cringe, I just cringe every time I see a girl or a lady with a big honkin' mug. I really believe a lot of these younger girls think that it's impressive. It's not, it just is not. It's not to women and it's not to men, I'm sorry. Now, when you're married and you're just hanging out with a husband and you're watching football at the pub, that's a different story. If that is what you want to do, heck, order a picture. I could care less. But when you are in the beginning stages of dating someone or on a first date, just know, not the big daddy mug. A pre-dinner cocktail, maybe some type of drink that comes in a martini glass, there's many options. And then one glass of wine for dinner is perfect. And generally, if you've got apps, you're gonna be there a good amount of time that those two drinks are gonna be very manageable. You may be riding the wave just slightly, but you should still be in control. And if you are paying attention to self-awareness, then control is something that you want to execute. Let's say dinner went really well, and you guys would like to get to know each other a little bit more, and he offers to go to the bar area or the lounge. If you feel that you are on the same page and you would like to get to know him better, then by all means, take him up on the offer. On the other hand, if you already know I don't see this turning into a second date, I don't see this turning into anything, there's nothing wrong with politely thanking him for a wonderful evening and making your exit. Don't worry about hurt feelings. You need to still take care of yourself. And if you don't see it going anywhere, don't waste another minute is what I would say. On the other hand, if you did enjoy it, now you will proceed to go to the bar or lounge area. You've already had your two drinks, what do you do now? My tip for a classy lady is you have one post-dinner drink in that lounge or bar area, but nothing more. I don't care how long you decide to stay, one drink is sufficient. No man, even if in the moment he wants you to get another drink, which he probably will because he doesn't want the night to end, right? He doesn't want the night to end, so therefore you have to get another drink. I really want. This is a first date. No man after the fact is going to see negative in a lady that chose to only have three drinks. The next day he is going to think, wow, she is a class act and I would like to take her out again. Yes, you may want to, and again, you might not want the night to end, but you'll have that opportunity. Things are going well. You guys definitely are getting along. That dialogue is going, flirtatious fun, and you're feeling a little attraction towards him. It'll come. You'll get to have another drink with him. I promise you. And number five, physical activity on a first date coming from a classy lady, as well as post-date correspondence. Now again, you may not agree with me, but under no circumstances do I feel any <laughs> Physical activity should take place on a first date. To me, a classy lady just is not going to do anything physical on a first date. It's just not going to happen. Now, let's talk about exceptions for perhaps a little kiss. Again, if this is an acquaintance that you already know pretty well, you hang out in the same social circle, you've been to many social events together, you've had many conversations together, you've probably drank together at some point, then I would say if the connection is there and you are feeling on the same page as him and he proceeds to go in for the kill, then by all means, I think it's okay. But don't let it turn into something that could be more. That is the key. Not on the first date, even if you know him well. I just don't think it's the right decision. Also, you have both had a couple drinks, and to me, this can be a really special moment down the road, and patience is a beautiful thing. There's nothing better than letting all of those emotions and all that attraction and those feelings that you get, let them flourish because then when you do have a more intimate 
arrangement, you are going to appreciate it so much more. So that is my tip. If it's the first time you've met him, no, nothing. I think a nice hug and a thank you, and you can look into his eyes so that he knows I had a great time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, it was awesome. Thank you. I just really appreciate it. It's okay to just look at him. He'll know. He'll know. So, and just leave it there. A lot of it's in the eyes. Men love eyes and they love smiles. So you can say a lot. Again, body language is a form of communication. Whew, I am getting hot. <laughs> okay. Whew, yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> okay. As far as post date, I am. <laughs> okay, we're doing a first date video and I am having a hot flash. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take you along with me. Post date correspondence. What do I think you should do? Well, again, if you really enjoy the evening, if you feel a connection, as soon as you depart, whether you are leaving on your own or he drops you off, I think sending him a nice text message letting him know how much you enjoyed getting to know him and how fantastic the meal was and thank him. Keep it short, keep it sweet, but keep it to the point where he's not going to question it. I also think you should follow up with good night. The reason for that is I feel that is when you want to close it. You did everything that you needed to do to convey to him that you are interested. Saying good night allows you guys to both just go to sleep, don't sit up for two more hours texting one another. Just let it go and see what happens the next day. If he doesn't reach out to you the next day, have no fear, be patient. He's going through the same thing you are going through, wondering what your thoughts are. If you really felt a connection with him, we're all the same. Men are no different. They may come off different, but they really are not all that different. So be patient. You did your part and you thanked him. Let him make the next move when it comes to texting. That should cover it. Five classy lady tips for a first date. Now I know I will get the question on who pays. Well, <laughs> I have mentioned before in other videos, I'm pretty old school, so I do believe that the gentleman always pays. However, I just recently had a comment in regards to just starting dating someone or a first date, and it was going to be kind of an all day thing, so there was a lot going on. I do think that could be a little different. I don't see anything wrong with offering to cover certain things if let's say there are numerous times something is being paid for. But if you ended that day outing and you went to a restaurant for dinner, I do feel like he should pay. I don't feel it's necessary for you to offer. Chances are the server is going to hand the check to him or place it by him anyway. I also don't think that this is a time where you need to offer to cover the tip like I recommend in my dining etiquette video if you are going out with a friend or if you're taking your mother out and she covers the bill, you may offer to cover the tip just as a nice gesture. But clearly, if it is a first date out, he asked you out, the expectation is that he is going to pay. Again, you don't need to offer, it is not necessary. And I would say that my guess is men would agree with that. Why not? I mean, that is how it should be. In, in, in my mind, that's how it should be. And I think if you are a classy lady, you would feel the same way as well. You should be treated. You are a lady and it is his responsibility to treat you. We are not talking married life where maybe you cover this bill and he covers that bill. We are talking about a date. So I hope this was helpful. Again, let me know if you think it would be worth doing one for the gentleman, if you think that they could get the word. I definitely have some things to say to them. Eh, okay, we're gonna end it there. <laughs> anyway. Don't forget to check out my dining etiquette video, my classy lady video, how to make a first impression video, and also how to avoid making a bad impression. I do have a follow up to the first impression video. Keep rocking it in 2019, and I will see you soon in another video. Take care.